before it. Have we had so much to play for on the final day of the season? Will both of these teams be playing on into the playoffs? Or is someone going to get left behind? Both these teams know that a win will get them into the playoffs for sure. If it's a draw, Minnesota know for sure they're getting in. Come on, together. One, two, three. Minnesota charging forward at the far side. Who knew it's going to be a tight offside decision as he got back to that ball. He scores. Now swinging ball up in the air from Debossi. Knocked down in the air. And Robin Lund stabs it in. 2 0 Minnesota. The Loons are flying right now. Hello there and welcome to the Audi MLS Playoff Preview Show presented by Pepsi and Cub. Callum Williams as always here alongside former Gopher soccer star Kendra D. St. Aubin. Kendra, lots to digest over the course of the next 30 minutes or so. We haven't seen you for several weeks, so before we start talking playoffs, let's recap an unbelievable regular season, not only for Minnesota United, but across the entirety of Major League Soccer. It was crazy. Yeah, and we've talked all throughout the season about the importance of every single match and how you got to find a way to get the points. You have to find a way to perform. And it came down to decision day, and we truly saw that. We saw on decision day on November 7th that everybody had all to play for. And you could see it with Minnesota United. You could see it across the Western Conference in particular. And the Loons came out to play that day on the road against LA Galaxy. But it was really a fabulous 2021 season through ups and through downs and, and challenges. And you could see the 0-4 start, which seems like an eternity ago. Injuries, international duty absences. And somehow this club found a way to scratch and claw their way into the fifth position of the Western Conference. And what a year it was. Well, there were plenty of ups and downs through throughout the regular season, not only for Minnesota United, but as we said, across the entirety of Major League Soccer. Kendra, I wonder after that 0-4 start, what your thoughts were on Minnesota United and where they could potentially end up? Yeah, and I know, I think, you know, the, the alarm bells were sounding after the 0-4 start because you start to look at the mathematical equations and it wasn't necessarily the alarm bells for you and I and for Minnesota United in particular, but for me, it was more about when you look at the other teams, how many teams had started the season 0-4 and made it to the postseason? Not very many. Well, how many teams start 0-4 and finish in the fifth position in the West, like Minnesota United did, so close to even hosting a home playoff match? So I think for Minnesota United, you could see the resiliency of the group. You could see the energy, the camaraderie, and the cohesiveness of the group. And as we said, they've had their, they had their challenges. It wasn't a smooth sailing 2021. Every team had challenges. But the important thing is that they came out on the right side of things, and they came up big time when they needed to, and especially on decision day. Well, you can see here it was a really, really chaotic 2021 regular season campaign, ending with Minnesota United finishing in fifth. This is how the Western Conference stood on the final day of the season. We'll get to LA Galaxy not making the postseason shortly, but ultimately, Kendra, when we were speaking about it before the last day of the season, Minnesota United's preference I think from a tactical point of view was always going to be Portland Timbers away and that's what they were able to achieve. Well, and I think it was tough 
leading up to decision day to say, well, I'd prefer to play this team in the postseason. I'd prefer to play that team. At that point, Minnesota United was trying to get above the line, in the line, stay over the line because of the craziness of the Western Conference. Away at Portland Timbers, a team that Minnesota United has had success this season already twice in 2021. But I think for Minnesota United to prove that they can get it done on the road against LA Galaxy, to have a really strong performance at home against 40 Kansas City leading into that match. So ultimately, this is a team that has to have the confidence, whether you're at home or on the road, to get the job done. And that is the most important thing. You want to go into the postseason with energy, not limping in like a sport in Kansas City, which felt like they were kind of limping into the postseason. I thought Seattle had that top spot, won it, and was going to run mm. away with it. But instead, Colorado had something to say about it. And that just tells you how long and crazy the Western Conference was this season. Well, prior to the playoffs being decided, it was an extremely decisive and exciting decision day in Major League Soccer. Minnesota United have struggled for goals this season. They certainly didn't struggle away to LA Galaxy on the final day of that regular campaign. And that's what I think it made it so incredibly entertaining was the fact that they got on the board first. You could feel the energy of that group right from the first kick. And on the road for Minnesota United over the last four plus now five years, that's been a problem. It's been a problem for them to come out on the road with the energy. Well, it wasn't lacking against LA Galaxy, and it was a breakout goal there uh, on a, on a counterattack, and Audrey Nunu find a, finds a way to stay in an onside position, get it done. Robin Lud putting it away with the outside of the left foot in the tightest of angles. So, again, this was a team in Minnesota United that was capitalizing on their chances. Audrey Nunu once again on a breakout counterattack play on the left-hand side. The angle's not there to shoot, so why not go back across to face a goal along the six-yard box in a dangerous position when you have all these defensive players tracking back to was their own goal and that's exactly what happened they end up with an own goal and a third goal on the night the one thing that people have said about minnesota united over the course of the last couple of weeks has been the consistency of the front four which we are now starting to seeing on a much more regular basis how important is that for minnesota moving into the postseason well and it's interesting when you listen to adrian heath throughout the week and throughout the season really talk about the importance of the front four and not just the front four clicking but just having time to play together the more time they play together the more they read off of each other and these are the highlights from the sporting kansas city game and these goals were very different than the LA Galaxy game. The LA Galaxy game, it was counterattack, it was on the road. This was build up play, finding a way to break down a very difficult sporting Kansas City team in possession in that final 18. The first one, Manuel Reynoso finds himself on the left side, dragging out the defense and crossing it back in. This time he's coming down the middle of the pitch. He draws the penalty and a little Panenka there to beat Tamilia, one of the best goalkeepers at penalty stopping in the league. So for me, this is about the front four finding time together, getting time together, clicking, and then you're going to see that chemistry. How often do we see in the attacking third of the field? It is about knowing where the player is going to be, knowing where the run's going to be made. Where does Reynoso want to put the ball? Where does he want you to make that run? Run because he's incredible in that final third, finding that final pass and the players knowing where they need to be to be available for him. And that's what we're seeing from this front four now as the season has gone on. A seventh goal of the regular season for Adrian Unu um, in Los Angeles on the, the last day of the season. How pivotal was that for him in terms of confidence? Because we've seen it during his time here, albeit short, at times he doesn't seem the most confident in front of goal, but he was certainly assertive in Los Angeles several weeks ago. Yeah, and when I talked to him after that game and, and when they came back here and we had a little conversation, um, I also credit to him, he did the whole thing in English, which I thought was pretty impressive, hmm. but he talked about that. He knows he needs to be better for this team. It was important. Goal scorers need to score goals to be confident, and that is what Adrian Anu did in that match, and not just scoring goals, but creating goals. Sometimes it's about making the run in the right spot at the right time. It's about making the run and drawing out a center back to make space for others to fill it. So yes, goal scorers want to get on the score sheet, but ultimately if, if his team finds a way to win and he contributes in some way, shape or form, he's going to be confident. His team is going to be confident in him. When he buries those opportunities, Ray's going to want to give him the ball, going to want to find him on those runs. So it's about the timing. It's about the positioning. And again, it's about that front four playing together. So Adrian Anu scoring that goal was massive. Even the second goal, the one that he created on an own goal opportunity, again, being available, making the run at the right time, putting himself in a position to receive the ball and being dangerous in that attacking third of the field. He's got to find a way to do that on the road against Portland, a place that he already found success earlier this season. OK, well, with Minnesota United frantically preparing for the playoffs at Portland, let's check in with the latest training report presented by Body Armour. I think everyone
everybody has just been taking the time to rest mentally. It was a long season uh, with a lot, of, a lot of challenges throughout the entire time. And uh, for, for us as a team, I think we uh, really took advantage of the time off to, to get some rest days, uh, really refresh and, and mentally prepare for, for what's to come in this next week of training and, and obviously the difficult away game against Portland. I feel we're definitely prepared. This this two week break is huge mentally and physically for our team, and I mean every team in the league. Just because the duration of the season, the wear and tear of two games a week and travel, and so I think it's great for our group, especially get some guys healthy. It's good to get all the guys back from loan, so we have our entire team here practicing, competing, and uh, I think it showed in the sharpness of our practices. been a real good you know mood in the group you could sense that they know it's you know it's it's win in advance or go home and I think we all want to carry on you know we get to that it's been a long old season but when you get to this stage you want it to continue what's another three weeks so yeah we know it's going to be tough they're particularly good form at this moment in time but I think they know that we are you know and I think it will be whoever's big players come up on the day. Welcome back in to the playoff preview show presented by Pepsi and Cab. Callum Williams alongside Kindred D. St. Aubin and we're joined by a Minnesota soccer legend, Manny Lagos. Thanks so much for joining us, Manny, in what is a very busy period for you, I'm sure. Um, just give us your overall thoughts on, on what has been a compelling regular season for Minnesota United. Uh, thanks, Callum and Kendra, for having me. Um, I, I think it's been an outstanding year in terms of the drama, in terms of um, you know post-COVID, a difficult, difficult year to kind of going into knowing what Allianz field was going to be like, what the season was going to be like. Um, so you have that kind of drama off the field. And then on the field, you have the drama of us starting 0-4 um, and having to think about, hey, there's a season here that we have to figure out a way to progress and be competitive. And I just thought it was a, it was a year of, of, of testing us as a club, but we still fought through it and grew and, and made the playoffs, which I think is outstanding. When you look at the beginning of 2021 and you talk about the trials and tribulations of coming off a pandemic and off a COVID year and still kind of being in the midst of it. And then you look at the roster that was still able to sort of be established at the beginning of the season. Were you a bit surprised by the own four start? Were you, you still trying to navigate and figure things out? Or did you know that this team with this roster and this staff was going to find a way to sort it through? Well, I, I think a little bit of all of the above. I, I would say first and foremost, the the line between winning and losing uh, is week by week. It is moment by moment. It is the fact that you know we played great in Seattle, but lose four nothing. That can creep a little bit of confidence in the next couple of games. And then you have a game like Colorado, you're up two zero, and you lose through two three two. And next thing you know, you have to recalibrate what you thought was going to happen during the season. The reality that you're in the season. And again, I, I think the staff did a great job of of kind of making sure that, that the, the successes of the club over the last couple of years were, were really being pushed and pushed on all of us to do better. Um, and I think the reaction was great. And it wasn't just great for the rest of the year. We had other moments where we dipped a little bit. And certainly, I think on the road, you know, we felt a little more inconsistent than we would have liked. Uh, but by the game against L.A., there was a great feeling of, of grouping together as to get a result when we needed one. What was the, the feeling internally in, in the, the locker room and, and inside the football club itself when Minnesota got the first win after the 0-4 start? Was it a, a sense of, right, here we go, now we're good to go, or was that always expected? No, I, I think in that moment it was like, let's get more. Let's get going here. Let's try to figure out a way to make sure we um, create the expectations that we had, which was not being 0-4. And ultimately, I think that the staff did a great job very quickly, I felt like, of, of really starting to get some results and getting the group and the guys believing in that we feel like we're a top team in the Western Conference and we felt like we needed to get to that space. And I thought there was other challenge that ended up happening away from the 0-4 start, which we had to overcome as well in the middle of the summer, particularly, like I said, a little bit more inconsistent on the road than we'd like. But by the end of the year, I, I think the, the group, particularly at home, I think really showed the potential of this team, which is why I'm so excited about the playoffs because – I think this playoffs is going to be challenging for sure with at the very least the first two games on the road. But it, it's a group that's dealt with a lot of adversity and is very resilient. When you talk about where the team is at now and sitting in that fifth place in the Western Conference, finishing there with the ups and downs and the challenges of the 2021 season, and even looking back at the last game on the road at LA Galaxy, getting a result when necessary in the 3-3 draw on decision day. Was that like the craziest decision day that you've ever witnessed or been a part of? You've been in this game a really long time. <laughs> I, I would say it, it definitely is because of how 
personal it got for all of us in the club and, and certainly how the game itself was so hectic and, and so kind of tough maybe because we just wanted to win that game and we were up and then tied and then up again. But the reality was is that there was a, a probably level of complacency within my own personal side because throughout the entire game, we were still always in the playoffs except for that last 10 minute period. And so to me, the, the, the swing of emotions of now having to fight and scrape and, and have the guys really battle to get that result in a place where the other team was just as desperate to, to survive uh, was what made it so compelling and what made it so proud about our guys. It's like it went from a, a day where we thought we might need a result to we definitely had to have our guys fight and battle to come off to, to make the playoffs. Sprinkling of additions during the regular season. Talk to me about the signings of Franco Fragapane and Adrian Unu and what they've offered to Minnesota United. Yeah, both in different ways. You know, I, I think obviously you kind of alluded to earlier in the show. Uh, we haven't scored as many goals as we'd like this year. We probably haven't created as many chances. Although we've done a pretty good job of creating chances, and we haven't converted them. And I think both those guys have come in and added to the offensive side of, of what we're trying to do. And, and every game, I think particularly when we're healthy, uh, them along with Reynoso and Lode is, is, is very dangerous, is very much capable of scoring and scoring a lot of goals. And Adrian has really given us some good moments where he's, he's definitely put goals in. Um, and that's been important. And there's no doubt he set a tone against L.A. by that first goal. It was massive. I mean, on the road to let L.A. know we're, we're coming here not just to play for a zeros or draw. We want to try to win this game. I think it was a huge mentality boost for us to get the result we wanted that day. Um, and then Franco, to me, is just a great two-way player who's really come in and provided what the team needs every game. If it's sometimes a goal, he'll provide it. If it's sometimes possession and really trying to break out and, and try to become a counterattacking team, he's done it. And they certainly provided some huge assists uh, for the team throughout the year. So he's been involved in loads of goals this year, which has made so much difference for us to, I think, recalibrate in terms of where we want to be offensively. We're not quite there, but again, I, I think it, it presents itself well heading to the playoffs. You talk about providing a, a spark and some offense, and I know that Emmanuel Reynoso is not new in 2021, but this is the first time a lot of fans here at Minnesota United have been able to see him in person was this season with the, the doors being back open again. How special is a player like Emmanuel Reynoso? And, and you've seen a lot of players, a lot of special players in this league and around the world. His ability on the ball and what you see from him, how, how special is he as a player? I mean, I, we're, we're incredibly lucky here. I mean, I, I would take away my Minnesota United hat, and as a fan, I just get excited to see him play. I get excited to see what his touches are going to be like for that game that day. I mean, he is one of the very few players in this entire league, if not the only one, that his touches create such a special moments throughout the game because of just how good he is and how shifty he is and how he sees the game just a little bit differently than almost every single player in the league. Um, and we have that here. So whether the win, lose, or draw, that – is going to be part of the ticket you get to pay whether you come live or if you watch on TV. You get to see one of the most special players in the league. So it, it, it makes me incredibly proud, but just as a fan, every game I'm excited to see him play, and that's because of how special he is. Let's go from attack to defense, shall we? Because defense has never really been an issue for Minnesota United, particularly over the course of the last couple of years. The consistency of Romain Metanier, Michael Boxall, Bakai Dibassi, Chase Gasper, and even Tyler Miller as well. You must be absolutely delighted from the defensive point of view for Minnesota United. Yeah, really great leadership, great guys, great group that's really, I think, over the last year and a half put, put a, a, a ability to be to show every game we are going to compete and make sure that we try to keep uh, the other team from scoring and that we're always going to be in games. I would throw Brent Coleman had a nice run in the middle of the season when uh, Boxel went down as well. That was really important. So um, it's been a really good part of the team and, and, and they really have a lot of good experience. They work well together. Again, for me, it creates an exciting moment for a playoff run because having a good defense always is super important when you're trying to win, especially on the road. Well, speaking of the, the playoff run and the defense, how important is this back line and even the midfield going to be against Portland Timbers and the way they have things kind of flying from an attacking perspective right now? Yeah, I think it's fascinating. I mean, I, I think the, the drama of the game this week and has so many storylines. That's the first place we played our MLS game, by the way, back in the day. And, you know, we've had some great games and battles. I remember the semifinal here and the Open Cup against Portland where we won 2-1. Um, and I just think over the last couple of years, you know, we, we've sneakily, you know, done really well. We haven't lost against them in six games, and we've played really well against them as of late on the road. So um, it's a huge battle this weekend, though, because this is probably the best Portland's been playing in over a year now. And it really is because of their offensive kind of shift they've done. them. They've kind of made Valeri kind of a super sub, and they've really given the reins to Blanco to really push everybody else. And uh, Giovanni, has, or Savarisi, has done a great job with uh, Aspria 
has really got the most out of him, probably the best he's been playing in his career. So um, loads of stuff there where we have to deal with a team that I think has really been playing on all cylinders offensively. But at the same time, I think we're excited about the challenge, partly because that environment is tough, but we've done it before, and we know that this is a really good matchup for us. Since that, that first ever MLS game, we don't need to talk about the scoreline <laughs> on that particular day, but since that day in Major League Soccer, Minnesota are 6-1-1 one one against Portland Timbers in the league. Why do they match up so well tactically against the Timbers? I, I mean, it's, it's hard to give an example of, of, of one reason. I do think, again, we, we've... We've got a really good defense, and I think we really do keep our shape well against them. And I think we've, we've done a really good job of dealing with their good offensive players. And I, I think in some ways that's kind of, once you can do that with Portland, then things can kind of open up. You know, you can kind of make the field a little bit bigger. You can get it stretched. The next thing you know, Chara has more than one or two or three players to deal with, and he sometimes has to get around the field, and he's getting up in age as well. And he's done it very well against us, but we've also done a good job of, of making them have to work a lot and work hard and if we can do that i think we have a good chance then of creating chances and making them uh, really think about us more than we have to think about them last one for me is just tyler miller the season he's had he stepped in after the 0-4 start uh, replacing dane st Clair in that lineup what has he done for this club and even were you were you wondering what he was going to be coming back from double hip impingement surgery I and mean, that's a massive surgery to undertake in the off season yeah he's my comeback player of the year I mean, no doubt about it. I don't know where the league's going to end up with that or where it goes. But for me, uh, just the adversity he had last year, having to leave and, and not be a part of the team special run last year and then fight his way back. And then also the reality of when you're out for a while, you might not be starting right away. So he had to also kind of make sure he was ready when the team called on him. And that's part of the going four start was there had to be some changes both within the personnel and within the attitude of the club in terms of how we were going to turn things around. And he stepped in and did a great job. I mean, he really was incredibly consistent all year. He's been uh, a big part of, I think, this kind of leadership culture that we have, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Just finally, Manny, third straight year in the playoffs now for Minnesota United. What does that say about the identity of this football club? Well, I think it says that hopefully we're on a good path. You know, we, we know um, we have so much more we want to do. There's, there's certainly areas of the club within the reserve space and the youth space that we just are just dipping our toes into that we are so excited about becoming even a bigger club. But within the first team side of it, um, I think it just shows, you know, from the day one, you said that, that first day in Portland and the plan of how we wanted to build a team and grow into Allianz Field and then how we wanted to come out of that and this next phase of this growth curve that we want to have. I think we're in a great, really good space as a club. Um, Saying is one thing, but now it means like these big games that we approach them the right way. We expect to win them, expect to make runs in the playoffs, and then we expect to respond to however that goes in terms of the next two or three years. We really want to be one of the top teams in this league. We have a lot of work to do that, but we're on a good path. Wonderful. Manny, thank you very much for joining us. Really, thank really you. appreciate it. Manny will be watching the team in Portland, but of course uh, you at home can watch it on television or indeed listen on the radio, whatever you fancy. And uh, you can do it right here at Allianz Field with a wonderful watch party as well. Just like they did at Brits several weeks ago. Of course, you can come here and watch the game against Portland Timbers at Allianz Field with a watch party with all your friends and all of your closest colleagues as well. Uh, Callum Williams here alongside Kindred D. St. Albans. So let's get into it, shall we then? Wait, did I, did I hear there were like 400 people, though, at that watch party? There was a lot of people. I mean, I remember you stopped <laughs> over, I think, after uh, after the match was over. Mm, I did. And, and I heard it was absolutely crazy, so I hope it's the same here for Sunday's match. I would assume it is. But also, one thing, whilst we're talking about fans as well, 275 officially that we know about yes. are going to be heading to Providence yep. Park as well to show their support for Minnesota United. I'm sure there'll be several other hundred that are making their own way of their own accord as well. 
Another wonderful showing for Minnesota United's fan base. Yeah, I mean, there has been no shortage of it. Through the entire season here at Allianz Field, every single person that I know that came to a game this year had, that had never been to Allianz Field absolutely raved about the environment, the atmosphere, the energy here. Maybe they'd never been to a soccer gate, period, never been to Allianz Field. So, yes, I mean, kudos to those that are going to make the trip to Portland. And if you've never been to a soccer, uh, a soccer stadium, that's an important place to go because it's a pretty sweet place, uh, Providence Park. But if you can't make the trip, and I get it, then yeah, come here and show up and watch the watch, watch it from the watch party here as well. Also, in case you haven't noticed, we've got some decent playoff swag here, by the way. You can actually <laughs> buy them at the Black and Blue Team Store. And have a look on MNUFC.com as well. Do your best to support Minnesota United in the playoffs. Right, let's talk about Portland Timbers then, shall we, Kendra? They come into this game with three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back victories uh, for the first time since September, I believe. What should we be watching for and how have they been able to give themselves the opportunity that they find themselves in now? How have they been as consistent as they have been towards the end of the regular season? Well, it's interesting because when we were having sort of our run of show meeting and trying to talk about what, what do we want to highlight from this Portland Timbers team? What do we want to look at that Minnesota United is going to face? Do we look at the other two games that Minnesota United was victorious, a 2-1 win here at home and a 1-0 win on the road? Or do we look at Portland Timbers' last two matches? And I think it's really important to look at the last two games because that is the Portland Timbers team that we are going to see getting the results at home against Austin FC with three fabulous goals. And again, this is about Sebastian Blanco creating. It's about his movement. He doesn't get the goal on this one. It's Paredes. But ultimately, it's Sebastian Blanco making himself available, his movement off the ball, coming back to full health from that ACL last year. If you remember that last year, he was the MLS's back tournament MVP on his way to probably be being the league MVP when he tore his ACL. And now he's back in full force. And if it's not Sebastian Blanco, it's Nis Goda finding himself in a position there inside the six yard box and again another opportunity here a nice little chip to the back post and Sebastian Blanco finishes and this was decision day at home against Austin a game that they didn't have to win they already secured that fourth position they already knew they were going to have a home match but they came out and laid the, laid the they laid down the hammer on an Austin FC side and it's to me is about the movement of their front three or four. It's about how do they find the positions to attack. It's all about Sebastian Blanco and making himself available, getting on the end of services, getting himself in pockets of space, shifting side to side. He's a very tricky one to mark and then he's got quite the supporting cast that are kind of on fire right now as well. And amongst that supporting cast, on both sides, it really is going to be a tale of two tens on Sunday. It is. And when we talk about the, the importance of the number 10, and we talk about Emmanuel Reynoso and what does he bring to the game for Minnesota United, we talk about what does Sebastian Blanco bring now for Portland Timbers. It is about who is going to leave their mark on this game. Who makes the biggest impression on this game? To me, that is who is going to come away with the victory in this match. And when I say it, their impression on the game, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be on the score sheet, they have to have it a goal and an assist, but how are they affecting the game? We've seen Emmanuel Reynoso several times get the secondary assist, or maybe he attracts so much attention that he can get the ball in wide spaces, pull the defense or the midfield out of position a bit, and then they can find a way, somebody can fill that void, whether it's, we don't know what the starting lineup is yet, but let's say it's Sasani Dotson making a late run, Will Trap, it's Franco Fragapane tucking inside, 88 key passes in MLS, second in MLS. 88 key passes, second in MLS, the 10 assists on the season. We've talked about this time and time again, Cal. If they had a goal score that it was able to put away a few more of those chances that Emmanuel Reynoso creates, mm. what kind of numbers would he have? But ultimately, for me, it's about what Emmanuel Reynoso does on and off the ball that could influence this game. What about Sebastian Blanco? Because all of a sudden, he finds himself with seven goals and seven assists and has become a real pivotal component for what the Timbers are doing. Well, first and foremost, it's about confidence with this group. Sebastian Blanco is flying, and, and even from the first few minutes that he stepped on the pitch this season, slowly working himself back into the, into the starting 11 and even coming on late in games, the numbers tell the tale right there at the bottom. 14-6-4 and four when he's on the field, 3-7-0 oh when they're not. Less than a goal per game when he's not on the pitch, 1.9 goals per game when he is. So this isn't just about him scoring the goals. It's about him creating, and again, 
talk so much about the movement of these superstar players. When you have a player like Reynoso and Blanco, they can't stand still in the middle of the pitch. This isn't the old school number 10 that can just stand there 25 yards out, get the ball, turn face, and dictate and, and find that next pass. This is a player that has to work, that has to move side to side, drop in a little bit deep sometimes, very hard and difficult to mark and keep track of in and around the attacking third of the pitch. And also, they're willing to do some work defensively. Again, this isn't the old school number 10 that just gets paid a lot of money to stand mm. up there and find that final pass. Blanco and Reynoso both do the work on both sides of the ball. They are willing to put in the effort to move side to side, to find the space, to find the game, and create havoc, wreak havoc on the opposition. So to me, it's about who is going to win that battle as the number 10. We'll take a look at the projected starting 11, at least what we think is going to be available both for Minnesota United and Portland Timbers. But I suspect, Kendra, from a Minnesota point of view, the number one question will be in the centre of midfield. Is it Hassani Dotson or is it Ozzy Alonso for you? Well, for me, it's Ozzy Alonso. And this is just purely in the, in, in, in the fact that I think he's been phenomenal alongside Will Trapp. This is absolutely nothing against Hassani Dotson. Hassani Dotson gives you more going forward in the attack, but I think Ozzy Alonso and his leadership and his quality and his experience in a playoff game at Portland Timbers in all those years with Seattle Sounders, I think you go with Ozzy Alonso to start the game in the middle of the in the middle of the pitch. He did not play at LA Galaxy due to yellow card accumulation, so I think it's going to be important for him to be fired up and ready to go. And I think the rest of that starting 11, assuming everybody is back and fully healthy from international duty, we talked about Michael Boxel, Robin Lud, Yuka Reitzel having a lot of travel, Roma Metanier. We'll see how fit and healthy and ready to go they are but I'm assuming they're all going to be ready and fired up to play in this match. You mentioned it briefly there as well Ozzy Alonso has not been short of a story at Providence Park many many years 10 in fact playing for Seattle Sounders against Portland Timbers um, whether it was in US Open Cup competition or indeed Major League Soccer has always always irritated the Timbers so that alone surely would push him ahead of Dotson. Yeah and just his intensity on the pitch and again this is not a slight on Hassani Dotson this is just what Ozzy Alonso brings to the club brings to the team brings to the field. I talked to him after that LA Galaxy game because he was at the game on the road sitting in the stands and it was an absolute nightmare for him to have to witness that and not be able to influence the game directly. So he's going to be ready. He loves Providence Park. He loves silencing those fans. He loves the battle in the midfield. Anytime he runs into a Diego Chara, very similar like-minded players and what they can do. But more importantly for me, it's not just about the physicality that Ozzy Alonso brings. It's his calmness under pressure on the ball. And we've seen that time and time again. If Minnesota United needs to get out of pressure on the edge of the 18, you can play to his feet with two or three of the opposition around him. And he has no problem under pressure spinning out finding the next pass and then dictating play to go forward. They have to be the connector. Him and Will Trapp have to be the connector to find Emmanuel Reynoso, to find Franco Fragapane, to find whoever might be on the right-hand side. We're assuming it's it's Robin Lud mm. or Adrian Anu if he makes himself available. So I think Ozzy Alonso is going to be ready to go. He's been taking you know fabulous care of his, of his body this season to be available for Minnesota United, and I think he's been an absolute star for this club. So I'd, I'd like him to, to step on the pitch at Providence Park in a starting role. What of Portland Timbers, the opponent for Minnesota, on Sunday afternoon? This how we think they're going to line up. Kendra, the question is, where can Minnesota United get the better of them on Sunday? Wow, this is a tough one for me because I think when you look at that starting 11 and who we think is going to be out there and what the starting 11 might look like, and, and Felipe Mora scored a pretty fabulous goal here, if everyone remembers, to get Portland Timbers on the board first um, with a beautiful header on a service in. But to me, it's about the two Charas. It's about Jimmy Char and it's about Diego Chara. And, and if you can get one of those two or both of them pulled out of position, I think you can find some opportunities to go the other way. But we also know that Diego Chara can sit inside there. He can sit in that central midfield position and make sure he puts the crunching tackle. His amount of interceptions, and, and that is what Diego Chara can do. It's about the crunching tackle, but it's about reading the play defensively. He picks apart the opposition by picking off the passes and cutting off the passing lane. So from an interception standpoint, he's one of the best in the league. So if Minnesota United want to find opportunities, I think it's going to be on the counterattack. I think it's going to be similar with a quick breakout. And you saw time and time again against LA Galaxy, for example, of Audrey and Anu picking the right run. He came across the field behind, or I should say in front of 
Roma Metinir on a counterattack from the oppositions from an LA Galaxy corner kick. So to me, it's about quickly getting out, making the breakout runs. That's how they scored the goal earlier in Portland against Portland Timbers. It was Franco Fragapane and Audrey Nanu making the breakout run up the left hand side and finishing their opportunity. So I think if Minnesota wants to find success, it's going to have to be on the quick counterattack. I think you've got to be aware of Dyron Esprit if he's on the pitch. Uh, Bill Tuiloma, we'll see. He's he's been been injured. He's been taking a few knocks here and there. I think Steve Clark is a goalkeeper. I think he's pretty good, but I think you can find opportunities against him. So I think this is a Minnesota United team that's going to ride high on this confidence, this energy that they have from winning on their, I'm sorry, getting a draw on the road at LA Galaxy. It felt like a win. The 3-3, getting the two goals early, capitalizing on your moments, and really it's going to take a team effort, locking it down defensively and making sure you're spot on from a defensive standpoint, especially on set pieces. Wonderful. Can't wait. My thanks to Kindra D. St. Aubin, as always, and the entirety of our production crew here at Allianz Field. All eyes now on Sunday afternoon, Minnesota United on the road in the first round of the MLS playoffs presented by Aldi to the Portland Timbers. And this 2021 campaign, regardless of what happens on Sunday, is always going to be a season we'll always remember. just the most enthralling race for the playoffs I've ever seen. He might be the best player in the league. He's one of the most fun to watch. Like, he's a wizard, man. He might be. He just conducts everything. They just get the ball to him. And we can rule.